translation one more time. The material defects of mistakes, delusions, cheating, and sensory inefficiency do not exist in the words of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So, in this regard, um, there is a name of the Vedic literatures which emanate from the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and that is the Purushaya which means not of human origin. And it's described there are three co-eternals, Krishna, the Jivas, and the Vedic literatures. Uh, Krishna doesn't let his parts and parcels, his uh, dear associates, uh, awash or set us adrift here in the material universes without uh, some information uh, how we can be as happy as we possibly can in this realm uh, and how ultimately when we become dissatisfied we can come back to him. So that is the vast body of literatures uh, known as the Vedas. And there are different components, and there's something for everybody in the Vedic literatures. Uh, an enormous amount is actually karma kanda. Mm -hmm. Instructions how to perform sacrifices to different devotees or demigods so that one can flourish in this world and then attain a very glorious destination in the heavenly planets uh, at the end of this lifetime. Krishna instructs Arjuna actually that the, the nature of the Vedas is mainly deals with the subject matter of the three modes of material nature. Rise above these, O Arjuna, become transcendental to them and become established in the self. He's trying to give Arjuna. So that is the ultimate objective for human beings, but of course, Many human beings are not ready yet um, to become transcendentalists. They're preoccupied with enjoying the senses of this body for now, um, but doing it in a, in a pious way. So uh, not as to become implicated in uh, severe reactions. And then to go to uh, an even more um, glorious, the idea of heaven is there pretty much in all spiritual religions or spiritual paths. So a lot less uh, volume in the Vedic literatures is what is known as Jnana Kanka, or for those who have become somewhat dissatisfied with material enjoyment and they're looking for liberation from material entanglement. So the Jnana Kanka section of the Vedas is there for those who want that. And there is an even much smaller section of the Vedic literature, and that is known as Upashana Kanda, which actually does deal with worship of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Vishnu, um, but it's generally tinged, it's not pure bhakti, it's devotion, but it's tinged with desires to ascend to Vaikuntha, where life is even much more fabulously opulent and glorious than the heavenly planets. So for Jeevas who want to um, attain that type of liberation, then the Arshana Kanda section of the Vedas is there. And even Srimad Bhagavatam does um, give some instructions like that for aspiring devotees who want this or want that, then uh, best to Approach Krishna, fulfillment um, of one's, even one's material desires. But that's not recommended because one can simply perpetuate the cycle of repeated birth and death. Um, but ultimately, one can become uh, cured uh, of material disease by Krishna's mercy. And Krishna will actually take things away from us which are 
and an, an impediment to our spiritual progress. So Shruti and Smriti are there. Shruti means to hear and Smriti means to remember. Shruti, Smriti, Puranani, Pantaratra, Inda, Haitiki, Hari Bhakti, Patajir, Bakokte. Devotional service to Krishna, which ignores the authorized Vedic literatures, such as the, uh, the four Vedas, uh, Rig, Yaja, Sam, Atara Vedas, uh, the Puranas, the Nara Pancharatra, the Upanishads, etc., is simply an unnecessary disturbance in society. So that is where. Um, Vedic culture and Vedic civilization and philosophy differs substantially from philosophies which are man made because anything that is created by a mere mortal, a conditioned soul, is going to be tinged somehow or other with mistakes, illusions, cheating, and sensory inefficiency. So that is our process in Vaishnavism is to accept knowledge which is coming down from higher authorities, uh, deductive uh, rather than inductive, or searching on one's own, trying to go up, uh, rather accept knowledge which is coming down from authorities, authorized persons. Uh, so and Krishna states also a Tasi Krishna Navadina Baba Divine Indriyasa Mukhitiva Del Swayamila Skura Veda. I can never be understood as I am by the blunt material senses, but I reveal myself to the devotees and to these with them for their transcendental loving service unto me. Just as if we want to cut something, we have to have the right tool in the first instance, and that tool has to be very sharp. So uh, these senses are essentially blunt, and they become blunter as we get older. <laughs> and we can laugh about it, and we try to avoid uh, drawing attention. Um, and sometimes we do throw in for what it's worth. That for the soul to be stuck in the material body is actually an embarrassment. And it gets more embarrassing as you get older. But what to do? Hare Krishna. Uh, we, we soldier on. Uh, and similarly, uh, yeah, Krishna has many wonderful names, um, and uh, just thinking here, oh yeah, Krishna. <coughs> but uh, in essence, we are we are very much dependent on mercy, mercy of the Vaishnavas, and mercy of our gurus and uh, the mercy of the Supreme Lord. It's, it's, we can see in nature, we can actually learn a lot from nature. We have all types of felines, big cats, little cats. Lions carry their young um, very securely and safely and gently in their teeth. It's known as uh, Sinha Naya, or the logic of the lioness carrying her cubs from place to place, those same teeth which we know can kill their prey uh, are very gentle with their own cubs. So that is how the baby lions get about. And then we have monkeys, that uh, is uh, Makata Nyaya or the logic of the monkey carrying herd babies, that instead of just going along for the ride with another lion, the monkeys, the babies have to hold on tight, either on the back of the monkey or they grip on very tightly underneath. Because it's dangerous out there in the jungle. And, uh, they have, and in that way, the, the, uh, the mother jumps with her babies from branch to branch. So that's how they get up. They get around by their own endeavour, uh, so to speak, by hanging on tightly. So this example is given sometimes for us, for all of us as aspiring devotees. We have, uh, we have to hang on tight 
Krishna's words speak, the words speak about gurus and, uh, and the Vaishnavas. And by them, their mercy, we make progress. But on, as well as that, we have to endeavor our, ourselves. Um, the, uh, we can be carried along by the grace of Hari, Gurus, and Vaishnavas, but no one else can um, chant our rounds for us or make it a point to read something, hear something about Krishna every day. So both are there and both are important. It's not one or the other, it's both um, are essential in, in devotional life. And uh, of course, we have wonderful examples and, uh, to, to follow, to become inspired by. And uh, I was just thinking, because this year is a little unusual, to say the least, um, we're a little bit deprived this year of some of the normal mercy that we get from Sindhi Vaishnavas. Um, of course, every cloud has a silver lining, and this year the silver lining here at Yugoga is that we have Bani Maharaj and Ramai Maharaj granted. So we're, we're all getting to hear wonderful classes, and of course our um, permanent sannyasi resident, and he's holding this Kundiko Swami, resident sannyasi. But uh, that's, that's the silver lining um, this year to hear so many wonderful classes and get a chance to ask, ask questions if we have some questions. There's always plenty of time for questions and answers as well. So, um, but the devotees are feeling separation, no doubt, from uh, their gurus who may normally visit us here in Govina, or we're deprived of the opportunity to travel to see them. So many wonderful devotees come here to Govina on a regular basis. But, um, just, and of course, in, in Gaudiya Vaishnavism, we have wonderful examples of all, all, all of the Vaishnava sampradayas. This, these, these different uh, substances are considered most auspicious. One is the foot wash. Um, when, when great souls visit our homes or our temples, um, quite often we take the opportunity to wash their lotus feet and sprinkle that water on the heads of all members of the family or the, the temple. Uh, and of course the dust from the lotus feet of great souls and then the remnants, the Mahamaha Prashadam um, of such exalted devotees. That's also priceless. Uh, Amrita or Nectar. There was a delightful story back in uh, the early 70s in Paris when uh, Shri Prabhupada uh, was visiting there. Two weeks before his arrival, the devotees had a distribution marathon uh, to please his divine grace, and there were prizes. Uh, the prize for the two leading, there were prizes for the two leading ladies and for the two leading men. The prize for the two leading men was that they would get to bathe Sri Prabhupada's lotus feet when he arrived at the temple. So uh, the leader of the Sankirtan party in France in those days uh, was His Grace in the Duna and Das Adhikari, now Maharaj. And uh, so no surprise, Maharaj first prize, and there was one other devotee who came second. So Prabhupada arrived, uh, and they were very organised. They had the foot wash uh, water there, just the right temperature, the towels, and beautiful fragrance, scented oil. So they washed all the Prabhupada's lotus feet. Uh, there was a roaring Kiritan arrived, Prabhupada was about to give an arrival address. So they uh, exited the temple room in a very dignified way of manner uh, with this Amrita, uh, this foot wash. But they were not alone. Uh, some other devotees eager for the nectar uh, were following. But uh, prior to that, they had hatched a plan. <laughs> they had actually, there was only one room in the temple that uh, the door could be locked, and that was the temple president's office. So they had borrowed the key one day and made a copy under the of the temple president. So as they were 
moving down the passageway, they realized that devotees were running after them. So they quickly went into the temple president's office, locked the door, and drank all of that unreturned. And the devotees were pounding on the door, let us in, let us in. So, and they are. They were so ecstatic. They may have left a few drops in that the devotees in there. There was a few drops in there. So, this is Zikhanus, this is Lolian, greed for um, this wonderful, wonderful, uh, most priceless of all to make spiritual advancement. It's a wonderful foot wash, many foot wash stories, but another one was in Rishikesh, I think you know, not Rishikesh, in Tadrish. Um, it is now called, uh, it's gone back to, it was Prayagraj. Kumbhanel, mm-hmm. 1977, at the start uh, of that year, Shri Prabhupada was there with a lot of devotees, and Atmatakra Prabhu tells this story. He was there, and uh, one very, um, very exalted Vaishnava from the Sri Sampradaya, who had actually met Shri Prabhupada in the year before, perhaps a year and a half before, at the opening of the Hyderabad temple. And this, this Vaishnava was there with, uh, with his very young son. And he was really impressed with Shri Prabhupada. Um, and he was a very exalted man in his own mind. So he came, as millions do, to the Kumbhanella. Shri Prabhupada was there. And this devotee came in with his son, it's about a 10 or 12 year old boy, and he sat right in front of Srila Prabhupada. And Prabhupada remembered him, so they were exchanging niceties. And uh, Prabhupada immediately was looking at this man's son, and he said, Give me your son. I will make him an acharya. And the man said, Yes, Prabhupada, he's yours. Anytime. You can have him. But maybe just one or two more years. Um, he's just finishing his study of uh, Shastras and Sanskrit. And Prabhupada said, No, no, I give him now. I will make him a child. So the man again said, Oh, yes, Prabhupada is yours. But maybe just another year. And Prabhupada said, Any time means no time. <laughs> you say you will give him any time, but that means no time. So anyway, uh, they laughed, and um, but the man had come prepared, and he had a shoulder bag, and in his shoulder bag he had uh, portable paraphernalia for washing feet. So Prabhupada's feet was sticking out from underneath his low table. So the man took out a little bathing bowl, he took out some water, a little conch shell, he had a bell, an archman cup. He did chant it all, mantras, yantras, tantras, mudras, and pujas, and began to wash Prabhupada's feet right there. And uh, Prabhupada let him do it, and uh, was just laughing. And then Prabhupada asked the man, have you taken your bath on the sun yet? Uh, and me, the, the confluence of the three sacred rivers, Ganges, Yamuna, and Saraswati, um, at that, at that most auspicious time, uh, the Trivani, um, Kumbhamela, when some Amrita falls from the heavens, and anyone who takes a bath at that time, no more birth and death, liberation. So the man said, quite nonchalant, he said, oh, perhaps tomorrow I'll go, from them. Um, but I'm going, when I go, I'm going to take this water and I'm going to put. Well, before he did that, the man actually went around and put water on all the heads of all the guests and sitting in the tent. And he said, what's left of this water I'll put in the sun tomorrow. And I consider this water much more sacred than uh, even what's there in the, uh, in the confluence of the three whole holy rivers. And probably just laughed. So interestingly, fast forward another seven years to the next compound. And I'm the of who's there again. So, coming from South India himself and being well acquainted with all the different branches um, of the Sri Sampradaya and the Madhva Sampradaya, 
So he had some connections and also done quite a lot of preaching there for Wisconsin and South India. So he knew a lot of the important people and he knew this particular family and their son. So one day he went out um, and he went looking for this particular branch of this tree stump of God and uh, he came to the he came to their pump up, we pumped up, a lot of people inside. At the end of the tent he saw there's one young Sanyasi giving the Brahja, giving the giving the talk, the discourse. Uh, somebody looking and the young Sanyasi was looking at him, so seven years later. And Prabhu went right to the front and this young Sanyasi got up off the Vyasasana and came off, finished up his talk and came down and said, Avatara Prabhu and Avatara Prabhu, do you remember me? And he said, yeah, how can I ever forget you? So he'd actually become the child of that particular Prabhupada's lessons. Prabhupada, the other thing Prabhupada has, had asked the father, bring your son here. And Prabhupada had given the son a big blessing, he rubbed his head. So much affection, just blessed him like you know. Seven years later, the young son of sitting there, three sons of God. So, um, this is, of course, uh, you know, this is the, the glories of um, you know, the foot, foot wash um, from great souls and blessings, um, the dust and so on. It's an interesting. But I'm really happy to read what's here this morning. I've got a story about Scotland. Are you ready for this? Yes. Okay, fantastic. Because I know you maybe get a little homesick tonight, but not, not so much. You told me last week, you know, I Pretty happy Christmas unless you landed here, right? During all this. But um, we have a really, there's a really wonderful devotee. He's originally from Scotland, his name is Dun Jaya. Okay? So when Dun Jaya joined the London Temple, he was one of the first devotees to join there. He's from Scotland originally. Moved down the line from Glasgow. And um, he was really anxious to get initiated. And it was the first time Prabhupada ever went to London. So, um, Prabhupada had initiated a few other devotees by mail, but he was going to get initiated from Prabhupada in person. So, he actually got the opportunity to massage Prabhupada one day. There's no one else to do it. He'd done a little bit of massage. So, he got an opportunity to massage Prabhupada. And um, whilst and he, and he heard that. Um, Prabhupada was anxious to meet him because he heard that Dan and John was from Scotland So uh, while Dan Jaya was uh, massaging Prabhupada, Prabhupada was asking him all sorts of questions, testing his knowledge of Scottish and English history. When was the Battle of Hastings? Um, how long it took by train from Glasgow to London? Eight hours long. Used to be probably less than an hour. Five men and get faster trains. This was this was late sixty. So um, that day I was getting a little anxiety. I was thinking perhaps my initiation is dependent on me answering all these questions correctly. But um, at the end of this quiz, Prabhupada uh, gave him a big smile and said, "By education, I am Scottish." Because he was, his college education was at Scottish Church College in Calcutta. Very, uh, one of the most prestigious colleges. And Prabhupada told me uh, humorous stories uh, about his time at college and also that he learned many valuable um, higher education subjects such as economics. Um, how, which would serve him very well both in his business life and also when he came to the West and established the Christian consciousness movement. Such as to be successful in business, you need a number of things. You need land, manpower, capital, and organization. So, Prabhupada recalled the time at Scottish Church College when he and some of his school friends were talking in Bengali in the 
in the hallway. And one of their professors walked past. Um, all of the teachers there were of Scottish heritage. Um, it's, it's like the Church of England, the, the Church of Scotland. So uh, that was Scottish. So one of the one of Robert's friends made a derogatory remark at the expense of this particular professor as he walked past the boys. And this professor turned around and severely chastised that boy in fluent Chris Bengali. They had no idea the boys, that the teachers all spoke Bengali. That was one of the prerequisites for getting a teaching position. So suffice to say none of the boys never spoke anything derogatory about their professors after that. So uh, by education I'm Scottish. So uh, wonderful, wonderful history. And Prabhupada also said on my occasion that the history of India is such that the English did take control of India, I think in the year 1775, and introduced English as a language uh, throughout the subcontinent. Um, and Prabhupada got to learn English, which he felt was Mahaprabhu's arrangement, Krishna's arrangement, that the British, in fact, did take over the control of India um, at that time and did their best to uh, introduce English. And of course, Prabhupada got to learn that language and the rest is history as they say. So, uh, interesting, so many interesting personalities there are in the audio sound of Daya. I might have just enough time to uh, say a little bit about uh, one personality uh, who is featured in this Chaitanya Charita by Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami. He's a very important personality uh, in Vaishnavism in India, and that is Baba Bhatta. And Baba Bhatta, just to be clear, there are actually a number of Balabas and Baba Bhattas. The first father in law of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, his name was also Baba Bhatta. He was the father of Lakshmi Priya Devi. Um, his name is also Baba Bhatta, but uh, the, the other Baba Bhatta is, um, is coming in the, um, the Rudra Sampradaya, the Sampradaya of Lord Shiva. And um, we know he had conversations with Mahaprabhu. He actually met Mahaprabhu in two places prior, and also he made the effort to come all the way from uh, Vrindavan, actually, where he was living. Uh, he was so impressed with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that he made his business to come one year when he knew Mahaprabhu was going to be there in Puri for the Radhyatra festival. Um, Baba Bhatta was a Brahman, a very exalted one, a very exalted Brahman family, and, um, and he was a great devotee of Krishna. He was vastly learned and he was a writer, a commentator. Uh, he wrote commentaries on Srimad Bhagavatam, also Vedanta Sutra. He studied Vedanta in Benares for some time, he traveled all over India for almost 20 years. Um, he was a Grihasta for some time, his, uh, and he had two sons. Um, and he didn't live that long, he passed away at age 52. But it's very interesting, the, uh, one of the conversations that he had, he had a doubt, he had a question which he put to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Puri, and that was regarding Mahaprabhu's um, propagation 
of Krishna's holy names in public. Uh, Adinam Sankirtan, uh, in, in public places where all sorts of people could hear the most intimate names of Krishna. And we, we read this Chaitanya Charitamrita as we're only too well aware the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, first and foremost, it's known as the Maha Mantra. The Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would also chant Hari Haraya Nam Krishna Gadabhaya Namaha. And one that we don't chant so much these days, but we used to, is Krishna, 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 hey, uh, etc. Uh, a couple of years ago, uh, Dhamma Prabhu sang that so delightfully at the midnight candle lit party on Janmasthani, and I'm so nice to hear. So that Krishna does carry on this one, he mentions those specifically in Chaitanya Charitamrita. Um, and we know that Sri Dhamma was very expert, he would also understand the mood of Mahaprabhu and he would introduce other songs according to the, the Lord's mood during Kirtan. But these are all very confidential names of Krishna. Um, Gopal, Govinda, Ram, Sri Madhusudam, Giridhari, Gopinath, Maradmoha, and so on. So that was Balabhabhata's question uh, to the Lord. And he had his point of logic was that in a Vedic marriage, uh, a wife will never call her husband by his first name. She'll always refer to him as Prabhu, Pati, or Swami, familiarity breeds contempt. So he was thinking there is the Vishnu Sahasrana, so many other names of the Supreme Lord. Wouldn't it be better, rather than these very intimate, confidential names, out in the bazaars and the marketplaces, there are so many atheists and agnostics and Mayavadis and uh, very degraded people in your channel, and it's very confidential. So that was his question. So, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu asked a waiter Acharya to answer. And a waiter Acharya answered in this way, but if the husband tells his wife, you please address me by my first name. I like that very much. Mm -hmm. Then uh, the wife should be like that. So he was using the argument of Purusha and Prakriti, Supreme Lord and the Jeevas. Uh, we are all Krishna's part of the parcel. Uh, meant to be enjoyed, meant to enjoy with him, or meant to be enjoyed by him. That's devotion, bhakti. So if Krishna asks, you please chant these confidential names, then no should do it. And Krishna himself was present as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he is the one who's inaugurating this and initiating this. So we are following uh, so it was interesting, and uh, at that particular time, um, the, uh, in, in Puri, um, we see that Balabhabhata, he actually took shelter of Garadha Pandit and took initiation from him and inquired for Garadha Pandit, you please uh, enlighten me, I've come to you for some, some more serious transference of spiritual knowledge, you please enlighten me in this uh, Madhuya Gyan, Madhuya Tapa, Madhuya Lhasa, the most confidential um, topics of Bhakti. So it's very interesting, uh, Lord Plata, he, he went back and of course, um, he, his sons and himself, they actually took over the worship of the famous Gopal, Didi of Gopal, who was rediscovered by Madhavendra Puri and reinstalled in the vicinity of Govardhan. They took over that um, worship. Um, and then event, eventually, because of the persecutions of, of Orange there, um, that deity was moved to Rajasthan, Nathwar, 
very holy place, and that deity is now known as Nathji. So that was the family's history and of course um, the Balava Sankara, but sometimes called the Balava Sampradaya, the Balava Acharya is coming in, uh, that Mudra Sampradaya. And very strong, uh, the devotees of Krishna, they adore Krishna, um, Bala Krishna, and his baby, and the Lord's baby would pass times primarily. Um, and uh, very, very strong Sampradaya in. Uh, the states of Gujarat and also Rajasthan. It's um, thought that the, there was a vacancy uh, for the position of Acharya in that Sampradaya at that time. So Balava Acharya he accepted that, um, that position uh, as Acharya in that Sampradaya. And of course, uh, they are wonderful Vaishnavas. There was a little misunderstanding once. Uh, in the early days of this bond in India, some devotees, uh, some disciples of Srila Prabhupada, uh, innocently gave a Back to Godhead magazine to Sumati Moraji, who was coming in that line. She was a, uh, a devotee in that Sampradaya, devotee of Krishna, worshipper of Dalva Acharya. Um, and Krishna Das Kavi Raj Goswami does say a few things about Balabha Bhatta here in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, um, which just the fact that he seemed, uh, well, the famous, one famous example is there where he thought he had a little pride in Balabha Bhatta. And how could you not be a little proud um, if you're a great Brahmana and devotee and so on? But Krishna does not like pride in his devotees. So uh, when he did come to Puri with his commentary on Srimad Bhagavatam, which he considered better than Sridhar Maharaj's, the great Bhagavatam commentator, Sridhar Swami, I should say, um, Mahaprabhu and Krishna checked his pride by saying to him that um, anyone who thinks uh, that uh, you know, he has written a better commentary than the great Sridhar Swami. Um, who's not faithful to the commentary of Sridhar Swami, uh, I consider unchaste. Mm. So, uh, this little reference is there in Chaitanya Chaitanya. So, sadly, Sumati Maharaji got about to go in with that reference, she got very upset. And she wrote to Prabhupada, and Prabhupada had to write her a long letter explaining the way. Um, but anyway, she was, uh, she was okay after that. So I better stop here, thank you so much. And any questions or comments? Rupa. Thanks for your question. It's interesting to know that um, Prabhupada said in, in relationship with the, uh, his Scottish teachers and professors at the time in the college that uh, and they were trying to uh, down downplay the the Vedic teachings and teach that uh, Christian teachings were superior. And uh, Prophet said at that time they no, they were just young boys. They weren't so philosoph philosophically adept to challenge these uh, these professors. And you know, I think one of the arguments one of the professors uh, posed was that uh, where's your evidence of uh, karma? And you know, the boys didn't really, couldn't really um, philosophically sort of defeat the professor, but they knew deep down that the nomadic culture, that knowledge was superior, and that the teachings of Christian, Christianity were, didn't really have so much depth. But at the same time, uh, Prabhupada made the point that they had a lot of respect for these professors because they were very, uh, very sober and morally high standing men. And uh, so it just goes to show the importance of teachers. The importance of teachers uh, having you know, high strict moral principles 
And, you know, as we've seen in modern society, a lot of the teachers and schools they don't have are just moral, high moral principles, and then the, the students really don't have the experience. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. yeah. Um, and just because we can't remember doesn't mean it doesn't happen. It didn't happen. We go and come out. Yeah. yeah. So many things we can't remember, but it doesn't mean it didn't happen. So, uh, but no, they were, and that was, uh, that's, that's an important point um, in any civilised society is that young people have respect for their elders, you know, maybe from a different tradition, but, uh, you know, children should have, you know, have respect for their teachers and, and uh, that's crucial, otherwise it can't be a, a transference if you think you know more or that um, yeah, you're not respectful. Uh, even you may philosophically disagree, um, but still some, some show of respect must be there. Anything else? Hello? I, I'm always wondering why Lakshmi is not the mention of the monk like 12 mountains if she has her own Sampradaya and Sri Sampradaya. Lakshmi? Anyone know? Lakshmi? There's no ladies. No ladies. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, and those. Do some research. I think it's okay. Oh, the looks. Thank you, Guru. You mentioned how uh, the Prabhupada Bacharya took on the Acharya role through the vacancy, and uh, sometimes we hear the argument that I'm sure Prabhupada is left with no Acharya. So, could you say something about that? Prabhupada is the Acharya for the next. 10,000 years, that's, that's what we hear. Well, uh, there, may be, there may be other acharyas. Uh, uh, acharya is like within the hierarchy, if you like. Um, Prabhupada, as we said, we accept Shri Prabhupada as the, uh, the acharya going forward. He may have many uh, empowered representatives uh, who are doing doing his um, doing service uh, and uh, that that particular term one who teaches by their own example a child and the Prabhupada's movement this particular branch of the Chaitanya Charity Marita there may be other Persons who adopt that title, Acharya, in other Vaishnav Sampradayas, and that's okay. Uh, Prabhupada had a, a very specific, that very specific instructions. For example, he said he wanted all his disciples to accept 10,000 disciples each. I mean, that's a pretty big call. Cool. Uh, but uh, not everyone's qualified to do that, of course, amongst his disciples. Some may be very qualified. But founder Acharya is a very unique, so Prabhupada's not just, uh, there were, Prabhupada has many, have many other god brothers who also accepted that title of Acharya after Dr. Sun Saraswati left. Um, we have our Founder of Charya in Iskon. Um, Iskon is very unique. Um, Iskon has its own uh, <laughs> unique identity in the, on the Chaitanya tree. Uh, and uh, in that way, Krishna Prabhupada is um, the foremost or preeminent Shiksha Guru. Instructing spiritual master for all of us, and um, and faithful followers of Prabhupada, they're happy to be diksha gurus or shiksha gurus if they're qualified. We can all be uh, 
instructing spiritual masters for one another. Um, we can all give good advice to one another. Everybody can stop the body in this time, which we all have the same philosophy, more or less. So uh, we can all give good advice counsel to one another uh, based on Prabhupada's teachings. Um, so I don't think the, the, the honorific title of Acharya necessarily um, is such a, such a, in some traditions they may want to, to have that, but we have, you know, so many persons, personalities who are carrying on the tradition in Prabhupada's name, uh, and we see how wonderful it is progressing. That all. Okay. Or I, Jai Ho, Sri Chaitanya Charamita, Ki Jai Ho.